Okay, it's time for us to get started. Thanks everybody for joining us. Um, it's um, 10 o'clock here East Coast time in the U.S. Uh, my name is Sue Dengenis. I'm the Director of Marketing for Synchro Software. And uh, just a couple of quick um, notes. Um, this webinar is being recorded. We will send you a link to the recording uh, later today, um, which you can share with your colleagues. Um, with regard to anybody in the U.S., um, we're offering a two-day hands-on training course for Synchro Pro and it starts in the fundamentals and goes all the way through some of the advanced topics. Um, it's in conjunction, it's being held in conjunction with the BIM Forum in Minneapolis, Minnesota. It's April 18th and 19th and there's a special discounted pricing for the BIM Forum. So what's typically um, $995 is $750 for the two days training. So anyone who's interested, you can find details on the homepage of our website. Um, and also, for those of you who haven't yet joined, anyone who has a uh, Synchro license, either a trial license or um, their own permanent or annual subscription license, um, I encourage you to join, register for Synchro Academy. It's our new online resource platform and all of the new training uh, uh, manuals, videos are uh, available there and you have your own personal dashboard to track progress and there's lots of other resources there. Uh, the advanced workflows are all uh, posted there as well. Um, so today's webinar is on uh, managing risk in Synchro Pro. Uh, it's being led by Pavel Krez. He, Pavel works is a 4D BIM and VDC specialist and he's based out of Leeds in the UK. He has extensive experience in the industry having worked at both Skanska and Morgan Sindel. Um, his experience includes power engineering, infrastructure, heavy industry construction. Um, so he's uh, a, a great resource. And if anyone has any questions, we encourage you to submit them throughout the webinar. We'll get to them at the end. And you can always email either Pavel or myself um, if something comes up later. So uh, we want this to be interactive. So please uh, submit your questions. And I'm going to uh, let Pavel get started. <clears throat> Thanks, everybody. Okay, thank you Susan. Welcome everybody to this webinar. My name is Pavel. As Susan mentioned, I work for SPD team in UK, so I will broadcast from UK today. Um, today I'll be talking about the importance of risk assessment and its connection to the planning process. Um, I will also present two most commonly used approaches to risk identification at the end of this presentation. Uh, that will be with uh, conjunction with Synchro Pro. So let's start it. We, um, we might ask, why bother with the risk management? Um, well, my, my simple answer to this will be that because it's a part of the project and we should not miss it. Uh, risk management methodology will, uh, will follow these strict rules and techniques, but, um, but Synchro can help us to, to perform some of those. One thing to mention is that uh, proper risk management implies a control of possible events. So this is good for our project because it's proactive approach rather than reactive. This is um, this is this is important to remember when we when we create plans. Um, by the way, this screenshot uh, is taken from the from the risk video we created and posted on Synchro YouTube channel. So please watch it if you haven't already. It's a it's a good addition to this webinar. Um, when when planning a schedule, we are. Um, we're dealing with, um, with, with time, resource, and cost. So risk is very, very often forgotten or managed out, even, even if the rule number one says otherwise. Um, I, will, I will refer to the planning process and its basics to, to, um, to show what, uh, what part we're missing, what we're missing. Um, schedule is, is usually structured, something, something we call WBS. The, um, the WBS is, is our definition of scope and task is just a portion of that scope, so something we agreed to micromanage. Uh, we also adjust the level of details to make sure this single task or work is, is efficiently manageable. This, this portion of work is enclosed within specific duration of time something we, we calculate using some, some principles and um, some outputs. Then we apply logic to, to the task, to many tasks, and uh, the, that logic creates the chain of events. 
So we, we then are able to calculate critical path and, and floats within the schedule. Uh, logic will also fix our start and finish dates for, for the tasks. Then we um, assign resources to tasks which will certainly bring some costs and expenses to the project. Some of them will have 3 3D representations and um, some of them not. Let's not forget that we are still using 4D approach, so, um, so they will be seen in our models. Finally, we, we assign the, the direct cost, um, whether that be fee or simply lump sum assigned to task. It's, um, it's the cost which is not related to our resource. Um, that um, approach look, looks, um, looks kind of perfect, but, um, but we're actually missing something in this equation. So a um, major number of schedules will simply stop at this level, but um, we are now missed uh, the, the risk as an as a integral part of our planning um, efforts. And once again, we forgot about the all implication which risk might bring to our project. So I will now add the risk element to the occasion and now, now we're talking about um, impacted completion date. We, we can see the increased duration, additional resources and cost, either resource or direct cost, both sometimes called the mitigation costs. So, um, so this is really our missing part of, of our planning process. Some people might argue that this belongs to the risk manager and, um, and it's, it's, it's his responsibility, but, um, but I think this should be a project team effort and, um, and that also includes planners and, and everybody really. So, um, so the next question is, um, what do we do to make, make it part of our schedule? Um, you know, first of all, we have to do it certain steps. Step one will be to identify the risk. Step two is to um, assign the risk to the relevant task. Step three will be to assess the risk. Identification and assigning risk is relatively easy. This is done by creating a list of potential risks and simply linking those with appropriate tasks. But uh, what is difficult is the assessment part. Um, I'll show you this uh, kind of matrix might might help to understand what what the assessment of risk should be. We need to estimate the probability of of the risk and the potential impact of the risk using the some kind of scale system. We can we can also adjust the scale depending on how detailed we want this estimate to be. Um, in this example, the probability scale scale runs from the rel rare occasions to almost certain probability and the impact from insignificant to catastrophic. I can't imagine what the, the catastrophic impact might be, but um, you, you can probably think of some, some of them. So um, when you combine those two uh, factors, probability and impact, you can, you can, you can see the heat map of the of something I would call risk significance and uh, if I was the risk manager or the, the project manager I would definitely like to identify all the risks which fall into the, to the red and, and yellow area and uh, you know less concentrate on the insignificant ones but definitely on, on the risk which are affected by catastrophic impact and, and almost certain probability. So. Um, we can we can identify risks. We can we can create a list of the risks, and then we can we can actually deal with them in in the schedule. So um, so how we do that? How we deal with risk in synchro? We have um, we have several options, but um, but I wanted to present the two most commonly used by project teams by planners. Um, I, I start with the slide showing the the original logic in the schedule, not affected by any risk. So, um, so you can clearly see the, the critical path, the two chains of events. I call it the uh, group WBS and WBS, WBS1, WBS2 for simplicity. Um, 
I didn't want to run into a very detailed example. This um, this this example is is enough to present um, our options. So we can see the critical path is going through WBS group number one. There is no risk um, assigned to task as yet, but the risk um, the risks are identified. You can see the the risk at the, at the left hand side. They were identified and categorized, uh, but uh, none of them are um, yet assigned to tasks. So step two is assigning the risk to tasks and then make the assessment of the impact and probability of it. Um, now we have two options to deal with the, with the assigned risk. Option number one, which is, which is this slide, shows us the, the risk implemented within the logic in, in the schedule. So um, for, for each task within WBS groups, um, I've assigned specific risk to, to those tasks. And, um, and you can see the, the risk indicators um, in our Gantt chart. Uh, that kind of um, assignment will, um, will change the logic within the program because um, it identifies identified risk here were you know smaller than the risk uh, in, in the group uh, WBS2. Therefore, the critical part of, of the schedule changed and now the critical path runs through WBS group two, um, and this is this is purely by uh, applying risk to tasks. So um, this option is, uh, is 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 when when we manage the risk on the activity level on the task level, and it's 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 really very high level of details. If you imagine. Uh, 10,000 activities in, in the schedule that uh, that is quite uh, quite a challenge to um, to do but um, but it's the the small, most preferred way um, as an alternative to that option two will identify the same risks on tasks but instead of being placed within the logic the all the risks are buffered in one in one task and that task is, is linked at the end of, of the, the, the chain of events and it's it's a good practice to link it also to to the planet completion to see the worst case scenario. So uh, we've identified those risks and instead of placing them within the, the logic we, we decided to buffer them in, in one activity which is which is shown at the end and uh, you can see the original logic is brought back the the, the original critical path is is also shown and um, and all the risk is now buffered in one task uh, this option seemed to be like a good idea if you want to focus our attention on on early dates and, and keep the the schedule logic intact However, I think this approach doesn't work on, on many levels, uh, mainly because all the risks are confined within a single task. So we, so we might have some problems with tracking individual risks and uh, micromanage them on, on the task level, if you want. Um, so um, although it's, it's used very often, this approach is really unnecessary if, if our schedule is managed properly. Um, I would really recommend it for smaller scale projects, uh, tenders and pre-construction schedules or any, any kind of indicative programs. Um, for more complex large scale projects, uh, the option one is far better management tool. Um, but ultimately, option should be discussed and agreed by the project team in conjunction with contract requirements. Um, so um, those two options most commonly used in, in schedule. Um, I briefly discussed those and um, that'll be all from me for now. So um, oh, I forgot one more thing. Um, I, I really encourage uh, every one of you to, to make the risk management the integral part of the schedule. So um, oh, I'm now open for the questions if, if there are any. Okay, great. <coughs> Thank you, Pavel. Oh, they, we have a couple of questions here. Um, the first one is, what's the difference between risk analysis and risk assessment? 
uh, well, risk w risk analysis is um, is a wider project management process, and um, it, it combines different methods and tools, um, which we need to identify and, and quantify all the risks, and um, and also to propose mitigation measures. So that would be that would be a bigger process. Um, I'll, I'll go back to um, to this slide to show the the, the risk assessment would be just uh, just the first step in the in the risk analysis process. I think the uh, you know the risk assessment is simply the estimate of of the of the outcome. Um, so we um, we're talking about um, specific situations, specific scenario environment. So you know once we identify the risk then we need to assess what what is the impact and, and probability of the risk. Um, I'll give you an example. If um, if you think about flood, um, a flood will bring the specific loss to to, to the crops. Um, you know the, the loss we can calculate and play place within 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 this matrix. Um, for example, in a, in a moderate in a moderate impact, but um, but the same size flood might have catastrophic outcome if we're talking about the nuclear reactor. So. Um, if, if, if the flood will destroy a nuclear reactor, the, the impact will be probably catastrophic. Um, so um, once again, the, um, the risk assessment will be just, just a part of the, the bigger risk analysis uh, process. Okay, very good. Um, here's, um, and it's getting on, so we'll answer this last question. And um, if any others come up uh, afterwards, please feel free again to email us. So this question is, in synchro, do the risk items only feed into the Gantt chart, or can it be fed into the resource properties too? Yes, they are strictly assigned to tasks, so they will be they will be first seen in in the task properties and managed from 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 this functionality. So they will not um, they will not uh, be seen in the resources. However, we can we can add resources to the task which become the this part of um, of the resource risk um, so any additional resources we add to the task because of the risk that will be our resource risk uh, or, or maybe risk uh, resource cost risk okay uh, Robert uh, let us know if that answered your question um, okay, well, it's uh, about 20 after here. We like to try to keep, yes, he said, okay, that answer. It's very good. Thank you, uh, Pavel. Um, Thank you. We like to keep these to 15 minutes, so we appreciate your joining us. We'll be posting more webinars as time goes on, so please join us. Come back and look for additional topics that may be of interest. Um, we have the schedule posted on the homepage of our website along with our training courses. And uh, as always, you can uh, email any of us uh, if questions come up um, that you need some help with or support with. So thanks, everybody, for, for joining us today. Thanks, Pavel. 